Hi, Michael Hellickson here with Club Wealth Coaching and Consulting. I gotta tell you, I was asked to, to do a video on my story, kind of the background of Michael Hellickson, and it's a little weird, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit weird for me to, to you know, come out here and uh, try and do a one take, here's my life story in a nutshell. Uh, obviously, it's gonna be a little bit real estate centric, but I'm gonna do the best I can, so here goes. Uh, so, in 1973, I was born. Yes, that's a long time ago. Hold your laughter, please. All right, uh, at eight years old, I actually started my first business. This was a lawn mowing business, uh, and uh, also I did some car washing for uh, folks around the neighborhood. And uh, it was actually a great time. Got to learn a lot, learn about, you know, keeping track of money and making money and what it was like to actually have money and get to spend money. And uh, I decided then that I kind of liked money. Uh, and I don't mean to sound greedy or anything like that, but I did like it. I'm not going to lie. It was great. It was fantastic. I was making money. I could spend money on whatever I wanted. And, uh, and unfortunately, I didn't learn how to save right then, but eventually, I'd later, learn, later on, I'd learn how to save. Uh, so... At 12 years old, my parents got a divorce. Now, uh, my parents are both wonderful people, love them to death. Uh, I'm sharing this milestone in my life because of the impact that it had, because I know that a lot of you watching this probably also went through uh, a, at least one divorce uh, of your parents. And um, my, my parents actually both uh, have been through more than one divorce. And I'll tell you, that has an impact on a kid, especially at 12 years old. It definitely has an impact. And I'm sharing this because I want you to know that uh, that you're not alone, that, that, that there are things that happen in our lives that make a big impact on us. And, and I'll tell you that for me, for this particular milestone, uh, had the impact that it told me that I don't ever want to go through that. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, no matter what happens, that you know, I work through whatever challenges we have. And so far, so good. You know, Tara and I have been married now for about 15 years and have had a wonderful marriage. Yes, we've had our ups and downs. Yes, we've had our challenges. Uh, but we've worked through them and we've figured out how to press forward. And I, I, I appreciate the, the support and the, uh, the guidance that my parents have given me. Uh, and they've both made it very clear to me throughout my life that, hey, Michael, what happened to us doesn't have to happen to you. And you need to figure out a way to work through it and make your relationships work. So uh, that being said, uh, by 15 years old, my, my business had grown. And by this point, I actually had 20 or so of the neighborhood kids working for me, mowing the lawns and all that kind of stuff, and uh, you know, putting beauty bark down, putting patios in, all kinds of crazy stuff. And that led to the need to have somebody that had a driver's license and a truck. And so I formed my first uh, partnership, and by the time I was 16 years old, my first partnership had failed. <laughs> And, and I got to tell you, the, the gentleman that I was in partnership with was a year older than me at the time. Wonderful guy, great man. To this day, I just have a ton of respect for him. Uh, just for us, partnership didn't work out. I'm sharing this because many of you have either been in a partnership or thought about being in a partnership. And I'm not saying that all partnerships are bad. I'm just saying that statistically speaking, partnership is the weakest form of business. All right, so uh, by 1991, I was 18 years old. And uh, I graduated high school in 1991, but before I graduated, actually in January, I got my real estate license. Actually, I'm sorry, January I turned 18, and by March I had my real estate license. Uh, and uh, so I, I was actually the top producing agent in my office by the time I graduated high school. And that sounds great, and it sounds like I'm bragging about my production and that sort of thing, but I'll be honest with you, it's not about uh, how great Michael Hellickson is, it's really more about how weak uh, the production of the agents in the office was because I got to tell you, even though I was working 100 hour weeks uh, I was and, and I was the top agent in my office, I was broke. I was absolutely flat broke and um, the lighting, this is, I don't know what's going on with the lighting but uh, I appreciate your patience with it. But anyway, the, the, the status of the agents in the office wasn't any better than mine and that's a sad commentary that we as real estate agents love to give each other awards for being broke and I'm telling you, that's not what we're looking for here, and I hope that you've decided at this point in your career that getting awards for being broke is not for you either. Uh, all right, so by the time I was 19 years old, I had decided it was time for me to serve a mission for the church. So I left for two years, served a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is, uh, the Mormons, many of you have heard of. Uh, and yes, I am a Mormon. Uh, and uh, yes, we are Christians, for those of you that don't know that. Uh, and so it was the best two years of my life as a single man. Learned a ton. Uh, and not only did I learn a lot about religion, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about what it means to be in a companionship and to get along with somebody else, even when uh, you maybe don't want to. 
uh, I learned a lot about sales. In fact, I learned mo more about sales in that two years than ever before. I mean, imagine selling religion to Germans in 1991. It was, it was awesome. So check this out. So I served two years there, and I learned two sales techniques. That's where I learned Brot, which is the German word for bread. And the bread of life for us at that point in time was building, in, in terms of, of, of bringing people to Christ, was building relationships on trust. And that's what uh, B-R-O-T stood for. Then I also learned the Ford technique, which many of you know, which is when you're having a conversation with someone, you want to learn uh, about their family, their occupation, their recreation, and their dreams, and make the conversation about them. And when you make the conversation about them and not about you, and you get them talking and not you talking, guess what happens? The magic happens. All of a sudden, they begin, begin to see you as a master conversationalist, when in reality, you're just simply finding out a little bit about their life and doing so in a genuine and, and sincere way. And when you do that, really, the magic does happen. All right, so fast forward to uh, when I got back from my mission, 21 years old, uh, returned to the United States, got right back into real estate. The very first thing I did when I got back into real estate, I realized that, oh my gosh, I don't want to go through the 100-hour weeks I went through last time. I want to do this better. I do like real estate, I enjoy real estate, I, I, I want to make that my career, but I want to do it in a way that allows me to have a life at the same time. So the first thing I did was I hired a real estate coach. Uh, and many of you have probably either, either heard of this coach uh, or have been coached by him at some point in your career, but I hired this guy and he was fantastic. And one of the first things he told me was, Michael, if you don't have an assistant, you are one. And so very shortly thereafter, I hired my first assistant, and uh, four years later, she became my wife, and that's when I uh, jokingly like to say that she, uh, that's when I went to work for her. Uh, and so anyway, that being said, Tara's fantastic, and she revolutionized my business. She allowed me to focus on my core competencies and my skills while she was doing the work that I didn't want to do. She was focused on the administrative side. I was focused on the sales side. Uh, we began building our business and had a great time there. While we were doing that, I actually started racing jet skis. For about a year and a half, I raced jet skis. And in 1998, I actually became the number one uh, in my class in uh, Canada. And so I took first in Canada at the Canadian National Champions Championships. And I took third in the world at the uh, National at the World Championships, or the World Finals, rather, in Lake Havasu, Arizona. And uh, so that was a, a cool little anecdote in my life. Uh, and it taught me a lot about competition and because I'm a, I'm a little bit bigger guy and a lot of the people I was racing against weighed about half what I did uh, on the water in a jet ski it made it so I was always last off the starting line uh, and so it was my role and what I had to do is I had to figure out you know how to weave my way through the pack and pass everybody and get into first place and I didn't always finish in first place but I'll tell you more often than not I'd work my way through that pack and I'd get right behind first place and eventually, first place would always make a mistake. Nobody's perfect. Everybody makes a mistake eventually. So I just waited. And I would just get right behind first place, and I'd wait for them to make a mistake, and they always would. And that's when I'd pass them, and I'd win the race. I'm sharing that with you because that absolutely applies to your business in real estate. So don't worry if you're in second place right now. Don't worry if you're not the person they choose to list with right now. Don't worry if you're not that person's first choice as their real estate agent. Get in second place, stay behind them, and wait for number one to make a mistake, because they will. You just be ready, and you take great care of them, so that when that happens, you're good to go, and you're now in first place. All right, so in 1999, that's when Tara and I got married, and uh, very shortly thereafter, in 2001, we had our first child, Madison, uh, our daughter, who's fantastic, love her to death, and 13 months later, we had little Austin Michael Hellickson. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, I, I was excited when I found out we were having another baby. I'm not sure why, but for some reason it brought tears to Tara's eye. Not sure if they were tears of joy or tears because we have another kid 13 months later. End of the day, uh, we have two wonderful kids today. Super happy with them. And uh, by 2006, we had uh, been hiring buyer's agents. We'd hire some additional assistants. And we, we were at the point in our career now where I was consistently listing between 50 and 75 homes a month. And that sounds like a big number, and it is. It's a big number. But you can accomplish that, and I'll show you how as we talk more about club wealth coaching and training. And that being said, uh, go to 2007. By this point in our career, we were doing about $400,000 a year in commissions. And uh, that's actually when 
we, we, we actually picked a fight with the state of Washington at this point. Biggest mistake of my career. Uh, I actually caught the state of Washington breaking the law and unfortunately uh, I followed the well-intentioned advice of a very good attorney who said that, you know, Michael, you need to be the one to champion this and uh, you need to go to court. And so I, I did so and we actually got a restraining order that said that the state of Washington uh, Department of Licensing had to quit doing what they were doing. And they never did, by the way. But what it did accomplish was I was now on their radar and I was now public enemy number one. It's kind of like jumping up and down on a hornet's nest. And uh, again, biggest mistake of my career. No idea to this day why I did that, but it is what it is. And it eventually led to uh, them suspending my real estate license. Um, and now, later, after they suspended my real estate license, uh, and speaking with, uh, you know, we, we went to court, and it took us about 30 days after that to get into court, and the judge who heard the case said, not only was this absolutely crazy, he said, his exact words were, this is clearly retaliatory behavior on the state's part, forced them to give us our licenses back, uh, but by then the damage was done. was done. They destroyed my online reputation, they had destroyed our business. At the time, I had, uh, in fact, you can see kind of down here, I had 750 listings. I had 44 employees. Uh, you know, I had about 400, uh, I'm sorry, uh, $4.5 million in commissions on the books. Uh, so a lot of money at stake, and they, it was just all gone uh, overnight, and there's really nothing we could do about it. And so we got our real estate licenses back, but uh, after about $350,000 in attorney's fees, I realized that, hey, these, these guys are never going to stop. We're dealing with an entity with an unlimited budget that has no accountability. And even though we can prove gross negligence on their part, and even though we took them to court and we beat them and beat them and beat them every time we took them to court, uh, it didn't matter. And so this battle was going to continue. And so at that point, uh, Tara and I uh, made the decision together that it was time to move on. And in 2011, that's what we did. We called our attorney up and we said, Doug, uh, it's time to... It's, it's time to give them our license back, and, uh, and we're not going to fight this fight anymore. Let them have it, and we're going to focus on our family, and we did. In fact, uh, we, took, uh, we took some time off, took from 2011 to 2014. We took about a three-year sabbatical, traveled all over the, the United States, bought this really nice motorhome, and traveled all over and did all kinds of fun stuff, canyoneering in Zion, and, and hiking in Yellowstone, and and just you name it. I mean, all, all the fun things, you know, Disneyland, just everything you can possibly do with a family in a motorhome. We did it that summer. We spent 91 days in the motorhome that summer uh, with our kids. And another summer, we spent uh, six weeks in Europe with the kids. And, and we just we really spent a lot of time focused on our family during that three years. Uh, we still, uh, we, we, at that point in time, we were not building our coaching business. We took a step back from building the coaching business. Uh, and, uh, and then we came back uh, in 2015, began building the coaching business again, and just have been great gangbusters ever since. And we've been blessed to have some of the most amazing agents and brokers and team leaders as clients. Uh, been able to witness and be a part of their amazing growth. We've seen clients double, triple, and even quadruple their income in their first year coaching with us. Uh, super excited about that. You can read more about that on our testimonials page uh, at the Club Wealth website on clubwealth.com. Uh, but there's one thing I skipped here, and I want to share this with you because it's a great lesson, and I really want you to think about this. In 2008, we had what I like to call a customer service fail. We grew in 2008 from about 250 to 300 transactions a year. We grew all the way up to doing literally, we were listing and selling over 100 homes a month. Uh, and that, trend, that, that growth happened in about a 10 month period. Uh, and that sounds wonderful on the surface until you realize that when you have that kind of growth, you have to support that growth. And that means you need to have staff members, you need to have a team in place that can help you grow your business and provide the level of customer service necessary to take care of everybody and exceed their expectations. Well, we were doing a pretty good job with our clients at that point in time, but where we were really failing was with the agents in our marketplace. What we did not do, what we really failed to do, was we failed to treat our agents out there in the marketplace like our clients. And I'm telling you, that's something that you need to do. You must master that in your business. You need to develop a client outreach program, take really good care of those agents, and as you do so, guess what? You will be getting referrals from those agents, you'll get better response from those agents. When an agent calls you up and says, 
hey, tell me about this listing. Instead of saying, well, hey, just go look in the multiple, tell them about the listing. Take the time to treat them like a client and it'll pay off dividends down the road. I promise you it will. Uh, it's super, super, super important that you really develop that at a deep level uh, in your business. So anyway, that's a little bit about my history. And uh, so right now, uh, today, uh, I'm living the life. I'm, having, I'm living the life of my dreams anyway. It might not be the life of your dreams, but certainly the life of my dreams. I'm very grateful uh, for all that we have. I get to spend a lot of time with the youth in the church. Uh, so I spent uh, now altogether just about uh, 11, 12 years uh, being a, a, a youth leader in the church organization, and that has been absolutely the, one of the funnest things I've ever done in my life. I get to spend a lot of time with my family. I get to spend a lot of great time with wonderful, wonderful agents that, uh, that teach me a lot and that uh, I have the pleasure of, of helping them grow their business and not just increasing their income, but helping them enjoy more free time and greater balance in life at the same time. So I really feel like I've, I've been blessed, and I thank all of you for taking the time to watch this video, learn a little bit about Michael Hellickson, and, uh, and I, just, I really hope that you'll give me a chance to serve you at some point in time and show you that uh, here at Club Wealth, we all have the heart of a servant, and, uh, and we approach everything we do with our clients with a servant's heart and with, and with the... Uh, the, the love that comes along with that for our clients and we really do care about you and where you're headed and we want you to know that we want you to connect with us at a deep level there um, and take the time to talk with us uh, don't just think of this as okay i've got my scheduled coaching calls i've got uh, these the, this structure that i have to follow reach out to us outside of your coaching calls text message us call us email us be connected with us Give us the opportunity to serve you at every turn, and we will. We won't disappoint you. In fact, we'll exceed your expectations. And I hope you'll do the same for your clients and for your friends. And uh, that being said, remember, you are world class.